On to page six now, Twitter stirs controversy yet again around the issue of censorship. The social media giant first locked the account after it posted footage of protesters outside of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's home yelling profanities and threats at the lawmaker. Well, the company said the post violated its policy against its threats. Keep in mind, you, that Louis Farrakhan still has an account, and you can still find Tucker Carlson's home address on the website posted by members of the violent group Antifa, who literally walked up to his door in the middle of the night threatening him and his family. Joining me now are the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. So, Barry, looking at the situation as a whole, do you think that this is demonstrative, rather, of social media bias against conservatives? <laughs> it's way more than that, Alex. Uh, Google may be the most powerful company on the Internet, making it the most powerful company in the world because of the tremendous amount of information flow going through their servers every second of every day. And when they control the flow and they control what you see through the analytics that are invisible, they have the power to sway millions. As you rightly pointed out, hate mongers like Louis Farrakhan, like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad, like CARE, like Antifa are up on Twitter and broadcasting vile viciousness every day. Mitch McConnell, who is the most powerful senator in the Congress, couldn't even post something saying, hey, leave me alone. They're threatening me in my own home. Is that bias? Oh, absolutely. One hundred percent without any fear of contradiction. It's overwhelming. It's gross. And honest to goodness, it has to stop. Yeah, I mean, you look on, uh, in fact, people will say that you and I are conspiracy theorists for saying this. Uh, a lot of people in the mainstream media go, there is no such thing as media bias. But in my opinion, that's because they don't necessarily know what the argument is. I mean, these companies are inherently run by people who are left-leaning, and the rules, therefore, are typed up, and the very language is left-leaning. Yeah, I mean, it's best shown in the abortion and transgender-type deba debates, where even if conservatives say a certain type of comment, it may be a, in, in a good intention, but you might get banned for it. So what do conservatives do to really combat this moving forward? Oh, my gosh, that is the billion-dollar question. Ted Cruz is holding hearings right now in the Senate trying to figure out that exact question, Alex, because as was pointed out in the hearings uh, over the last couple of days, uh, an expert who was brought before the Senate subcommittee said, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I gave money to Hillary Clinton. I voted for Hillary Clinton. And I'm here to testify that I believe Google changed millions of minds voting in the 2016 election and in the 2020 election may be able to change as many as 10 million votes to the progressive liberal uh, agenda of the people that run the company. And that goes for Twitter. It goes for YouTube, the second most popular on the Internet. It goes for Google that controls the flow of information. It goes for Facebook, Instagram, and so on. And the scary part, Alex, is the analytics are invisible. So nobody knows what is being written in. So when people are searching, they might get Trump and 300 articles how he is such a demonstrative white supremacist racist. And if you Google Biden, it might give you an equal number of articles about how great he is and how he should be president. That's how they change minds. The question is, and I don't know the answer, what are we going to do about it? I think yeah. this is a prime example of a monopoly controlling too much power, in this case, the vote, it's not the Russians, it's the people at the top, at the media giants that control what people see, what they read, and therefore how they think. Yeah, wow, I mean, is that scary. It is scary. So, I mean, this is, all comes down to a battle of information. And actually, to his credit, too, you mentioned Ted Cruz. I also want to point out uh, Senator Josh Hawley from Missouri has also been on the front lines in this effort. He's put legislation forward as well. So it's really a matter of whether or not that's actually ever taken up. But Barry, thank you very much.